Good morning, everybody, and welcome to UC Expo 2019. It's fantastic to see so many of you here this morning, and I hope you have a great couple of days at the event. Our opening keynote this morning is an entrepreneur who built, who built technologies used by 86% of the entire web, an executive who sat on the fourth public board by the age of 40, and now heads up Cisco collaboration efforts. Please welcome Amy Chang. Thank you for the warm welcome. I'm so excited to be here with you in London today. It's actually beautiful weather, which, you know, got to say that's lucky. All right. So for the next 25 minutes, it is my mission to show you Cisco collaboration in a whole new light, in a cognitive light. And we're going to fast forward first to future state, and then I'm going to pull that back and take you through step by step what that means we put into your hands now. So about a month ago, on the heels of 24% year-over-year growth, we are so excited that in this multi-billion dollar business that already exists, to introduce the concept of cognitive collaboration. And this concept is going to touch the already 300 million people worldwide on Cisco collaboration today. Now, when I sit down with all of you, our customers, our partners, our analysts, one of the most fascinating parts of the conversation is always without fail, where is our industry headed? What happens two years, three years, five years out from now that is going to cause sweeping change through this industry? That is where cognitive collaboration comes in. It's context and intelligence slipstreamed into the product without the user needing to lift a finger. And this technology is going to be foundational to delivering massively personalized experiences and really changing how we work. So let me give you a simple example. For your next meeting with a customer, wouldn't it be better if everything about the account, the person, the company, was just all brought to you on a silver platter without you needing to lift a finger? Well, that future is closer than you think. Take a look. Identity confirmed. Welcome, Jerry Elliott. I have the briefings for your 3 p.m. video conference with David Solomon of Goldman Sachs and Ariana Huffington of Thrive. David Solomon had a recent news spike. Here is a popular video of David. Goldman Sachs last reported earnings are shown here. Year-over-year -year profit and revenue comparisons are as follows. You and David likely know these people in common. One minute until your meeting begins. So why Cisco? to bring this to life? What do we have up our sleeves that's actually going to be able to create this type of platform? Well, I do have something to show you there. So about 12 months ago, Cisco and Chuck realized that collaboration was going to have intelligence and machine learning woven into it, and that that was the direction the entire industry was moving, and we needed to get out in front of it. So Chuck bought a little startup called a company, and that was my company. And those of us who founded it mostly came from Google. So at Google, we created Google Analytics. And we started when it was this teeny tiny little thing. And then we basically, towards the end, were serving 86% of the entire web. So when Facebook got a hit, we got a hit. When Twitter got a hit, we got a hit. And the system was a billion queries per second. So there were two things that we learned how to do well as part of that experience. Build a massively scaled data platform and crawl the web, because it's Google, right? So you put those two things together, and what we created was a super scaled data ingestion engine, which every nanosecond of the day is on the hunt for anything about a person or a company. And the second we find it, now, mind you, non-logged in, publicly available data about a person or a company, we grab it, we parse it into its component pieces, 
and then we associate it to the right person. And if you have a name like Amy Chang, it is the world's most generic name. It's the Jim Smith of the Chinese world, right? There are thousands of us running around. There's two at Cisco. So if you've got a name like that, that discernment and that patterning to figure out who this piece of information is about is actually hard. And in the first two years or so, those of you who are familiar with machine learning at all know that you can get to 80, 85%, right? Just about there. 85% to 90, it's a dogfight for every percentage point. 90 to 95, 96, 97 is a dogfight for every 10 basis points because you optimize one thing and something else kind of falls out the other side that's unoptimized. So that tuning and tweaking and boosting took another three years and we are now between 96 and 97% accuracy. And at that point, for human consumption, it's ready. So now there are 250 million people and 25 million companies enriching what we're calling the WebEx graph. And every piece of the platform is able to use this graph. So here's where I actually show you rather than tell you what it is. For reference, this is my friend Pat Wirtz, and this is her profile on LinkedIn, not on WebEx, but on LinkedIn. It's pretty sparse. Pat hasn't had to look for a job in a while. And when do you update LinkedIn? When you're looking for a job. So it says here she's an assistant at 3M, right? Now let me show you Pat on the WebEx graph. It's rich, it's dense. Everything you need to know about Pat is right here pulled into one place. So if you only have 10 seconds before you get ready to sit down with her for a meeting, you just read the advisories. And that's all you need to know. If you have 60 seconds, everything about anything she's blogged about, any videos she's been in, any news articles she's been in, where she went to school, where she's worked, all of that is right here. And now if I do click on one of the companies that she's associated with, right, I click on Procter & Gamble, everything short of needing to trade on Procter stock is right here for you in one place. Because when you're sitting down with that person, the more you know about their company, the more you know about their headspace, right? So you see here this news activity graph. This is anomaly detection and patterning. On any given Wednesday at 10 a.m., we know exactly how much news Procter & Gamble is supposed to have. The second it jumps the standard deviation up over that, we're gonna send you an alert if Procter is your account. And if Pat is a client of yours, we'll send you an alert too. Again, without you needing to lift a finger, right? This is moving meetings, moving collaboration into another contextual level. So. The other interesting thing is not just the base data and what you can do with it. It's what happens once you amalgamate it and actually algorithmically determine conclusions from it. So let's go back for a second to this other chart. So every single purple plus on this chart, those are human beings. So Pat Wirtz, you know, one of the human beings on here. Now, all of these purple pluses are the last 50 years worth of Stanford alumni. And every single column is a graduating class. And what we've done is we've mapped them against a y-axis of business prominence. Now you could do media prominence, political prominence, this is business prominence. And we're taking and we're looking at, for any graduating class, whose career has pulled a standard deviation up off of the cohort norm. So as you have gone from hop to hop to hop to hop in your career, how accelerated has that hopping been? And how significant a place for everyone? And every place has its own relevance ranking. So if you took a Stripe versus an American Express, MX is a large market cap, you know, relatively high value company, but Stripe is massively fast growing. And the rate at which the market cap has changed is quite kind of accelerated. So we're gonna take all of that into account. We're gonna look at the fact that at Salesforce, there are very, very, very many more vice presidents per capita than there are at Facebook. So we're normalizing for all of these factors. And we take all of that, we're subgraphing people too. So 10 people came in to Price Waterhouse at roughly the same time. What's their whole progression been, right? Who started at the same level? And we're looking at all of that and comparing it. So what we've done then is rank these folks against business prominence. That green line, 
that's the 90th percentile. Every single purple plus above that green line, Stanford needs to know about now. Every single purple plus along the band of that green line, those are your rising stars and your high potentials. Those are the folks who are gonna peak in two years, five years, 10 years in their career that Stanford needs to start creating a relationship with now. So you imagine this concept for a moment, this high potentials concept applied to contact center. Imagine not only being able to route based on customer lifetime value, but potential customer lifetime value and understanding not just what has this person spent with me already, what could they spend with me? How big could their wallet be with me? And how much effort should I put in to earn that right to service that customer? That's the direction we're moving in. That's the direction we're investing in. Now let me show you how this is already incorporated into WebEx today, into the WebEx platform first on meetings in about a month on Teams, and it's just gonna keep going from there. So. Let's take a look. This, everything you're gonna see here in this video is in existence now. When he comes, when, it, when he brings it up, you'll see it. So this is live and real and in use by customers today. So we have Fortune 10 customers who are using this new platform upwards of 280 million minutes a month. And the video usage on this for companies that have transitioned over to this new version is like this because it's just so easy now. And the pieces around cognitive that you saw in the left-hand side there, those actually went into early release last month. So if any of you is interested on your own company's behalf or as a partner on behalf of your clients, just sign up via Control Hub and we'll get you in there. But you're gonna see it sweep through to everybody within the next month. So we're really excited about that. And it's not just gonna be on the WebEx meetings platform, it's gonna be on Teams, it's going to be on our devices, right? Because you know we make a lot of devices still and it's gonna come into contact center in a huge way. So actually, let's talk about that for a second. And for anyone who wants to talk to him afterwards, our general manager for contact center is sitting right there. Vasily, you wanna, wanna wave? <laughs> so we talked for a second about how best in class is going to be combining customer lifetime value with potential customer lifetime value because it's all about getting the right customer to the right agent at the right time so that they are properly serviced. If you're United Airlines, imagine you have 20,000 agent representatives that answer the phone, right? How would you like it if that routing is so much more efficient? How would you like it if every single time the agent received the call, they're prepared to receive that call and it's a call they know how to answer? And better yet, if over time, instead of 20,000 agents answering inbound calls, it became 16,000 agents answering inbound calls, 4,000 concentrated on selling the excess inventory for business class seats because you know for every flight what the potential is for each customer that's there, who you should actually sell the upgrade to within the next 48 hours when those seats are empty. That's the world we're moving towards and that's what we're building and that's what we're investing in. So I cannot wait for that to be a reality. All right, and we talked about devices for a second. 
You all have already seen WebEx Assistant, and you've probably played with it. Many of you actually have it. But did you know that we've already got cognitive layered inside of our devices like RoomKit Mini, which serve huddle spaces, those three to five person spaces? And it's going to be in our products to serve jump spaces, those one to two person phone rooms. We've got facial recognition, which you saw briefly in the video, which you're gonna get a much better demo from our Oslo team on, and active framing, so that you're not sitting there with that little remote going trying to zoom in on the person speaking. We're automatically doing that for you. So, our Oslo team is here to tell us a little bit more. They're the ones that build this technology. Take it away, Oslo. Hi, everyone. Great to see all of you guys. So we're joining you from Oslo, and we're sitting here huddled in a very small meeting room, and we're using the brand new RoomKit Mini. So this is the newest member in the RoomKit lineup, and it has had a fantastic introduction into the market. It's actually the fastest uh, ramping collaboration endpoint ever. And it is designed for those really small huddle spaces and rooms for up to five people. So you can think of it as a room kit, but smaller. A single screen system where people can sit close to the screen. The room kit mini has an extreme wide angle camera. It's 120 degrees field of view. And I'm actually sitting so close now that I just reach out and touch it. And with the extreme camera view, we need to use the powerful RoomKit Mini hardware to straighten out the fisheye effect. And this is something our competitors are not capable of, so let's have a look. This is actually the raw camera feed, and this is what our competition would use. And you can see here that we have bent lines and curved edges on the sides of the image. It might look fine, but it's not that great, so we've fixed it. So let's just go back to the corrected Cisco view. <laughs> That's a lot better. Yeah. And like the rest of the portfolio, the camera is fully automatic using Best View, so you don't need to worry about camera control and presets and such. Uh, as you can see, Anders turn on Best View, and you get a much better view from our side uh, immediately. And of course, like most of you guys have noticed, we have our name tags popping up here as well. So throughout the whole room portfolio, we can now support those great AI features. But I also think we should do a little stress test on that as well. Let's see if my name tag will stay there if I put a pair of shades on. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Well, that's not really a stress test, is it? Let's see what happens if I, uh, if I put my hair back on. <laughs> yeah, still works. That's, uh, that's really, really good. Uh, and we also wanted to show you diagnostic mode of, of our camera as well. So that's, of course, not something that any user will see, but it just shows the capabilities of the camera. And this is a feature set we have across the portfolio of products as well. So you can see the gray square we have here around us. That's the active crop that the camera will be sent to the other side. You see the green squares that we have in our faces. That's the face detection system knows where people are sitting in the room. And based on that, we can also make the perfect crop, making sure that everybody in the crop that we're sending to the other side. And then on the upper right corner, uh, we also have people count. So the system will count the number of people in the meeting room, making sure that we can get better statistics on the usage. So of course, for an administrator, this is really, really good uh, to know how many people on average that is using the video systems as well. Yeah. So to sum it up, from Oslo, the RoomKit Mini has been a runaway success so far. It is providing the same industry-leading industry quality that our customers are used to from Cisco products, but we now put that into even smaller meeting rooms and huddle spaces. Yeah, and the team here in Oslo looks forward to add even more features and functionality uh, in the future. So that's it from us. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll hand it back to you, Amy. So you saw that people count in the upper corner, right? What can be done with that people count from a capacity utilization perspective is really fascinating. So these days, almost every company that's growing is running out of space in some geolocation. Maybe not all, but there are some portions that are oversubscribed, right? So what this allows people to do is figure out where are we quickly becoming oversubscribed and get out in front of that so that our CIOs, our workplace resources customers, and our partners can create practices to make certain that that capacity is planned for. So that telemetry that is going to pervade every single part of our portfolio. And we're gonna be handing you those numbers so that you can better prepare for every single part of this experience and make certain that employees 
have a phenomenal employee experience every step of the way. Because if we're going to talk about war for talent, that is a big piece of it, that the employee experience be fantastic. Okay, so it is all well and good for us to stand up here and say cognitive is going to be the best thing since sliced bread, which we honestly do think it is, but it's probably a little more useful if we have customers talk to you about it. So we have prepared some customers talking about what they're going to do with cognitive, why it's going to matter to them, and the implications of it on the industry. We really want to create a set of experiences for our employees from the time they arrive to the time they go home. For them to walk into work and say, wow, Ford is a great place to work. On an annual basis, we have nearly 7 million meetings and over 170 million minutes. 3 million meetings per year going on on a global basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in countries around the world. We have to bring people together and video is the best way to do that. We used to think about it as, you know, webinars and video connections, but now we're actually talking about an experience. Now we get to create a different experience and employees get a chance to, to collaborate in a different way. An experience that people enjoy that people engage with. It's a very different way of looking at collaboration. There are information grids within corporations. Information grids have to be unlocked. It takes technology such as the cognitive collaboration tools to be able to do that. Cognitive collaboration is the future. Recognizing the employee as they walk into the room making sure that, again, it's that seamless, frictionless experience for them. It brings the information to you. It's, it's a push. You don't have to run 20 different Google searches, and you don't have to go to LinkedIn, and you don't have to, it just, it automatically comes to you, and I just think it's gonna be incredibly powerful. So we are so grateful to Ford, to Procter & Gamble, and to Splunk for their support and for their input. So their insights in creating a platform like this that is game-changing and a departure from how you've done things before is so critical. So if any of you has that input that you'd like to give, we are all ears, and we would love to get to hear it. Now, we would also be remiss if we didn't stop for a second and talk about the platform and the ecosystem and what we're enabling. We talked for a second about telemetry, but there's a lot more to it than that because you're gonna see us creating API hooks into every part of the platform because there are customizations and there are sub-vertical needs from customers that we ourselves are never going to be able to fulfill without the help of our partners. So you're going to see us open up those platforms and allow people to build what they need to build on top of a very, very strong platform as a foundation. There is an example that is so near and dear to my heart. So there's a little boy named Lorenzo. And in his first nine months of life, he's already had to have two open heart surgeries. And the thing is, when babies are born with this heart condition and they have to have these surgeries, they have to stay in the hospital for months afterwards. And the risk of infection and the survival rates are hugely affected by how quickly they get to go home. So together with our partners, Locus Health, and together with the Children's Hospital of Cleveland, Apple iPads and Cisco Jabber, we're letting babies like Lorenzo across the United States go home months earlier. Let me show you. We would spend all day at the hospital, come home, sleep, and then be back up there every day. He was in the hospital for five months. It was a lot to get used to. Whenever I walk in the room of a new baby that's born, even if we knew before birth that the baby was going to be born with single ventricle heart disease, the first thing I say to the family is congratulations, because they need to feel happy the same way I felt when I had my kids.
in the past they should actually keep these babies in the hospital. But over time we found that we can monitor them safely at home and technology has really helped us do that. The Locus Health app and the Jabber app allow parents to feel safer at home and have a sense of control. The team on the other end is going to be there to look and make sure everything's going okay. The minute that we need to do a Jabber, I'm immediately on the iPad with the family saying, we're going to get it figured out together. So basically what happens there is he gets to come home months earlier. And it's a fantastic thing because the survival rates for these children is so much higher as a result. And that's actually what collaboration is all about. Even when you're miles and miles apart, feeling as if you are in the same room right there together, able to help each other, and in this case, able to save a life together. We are so proud of what the doctors and clinicians as part of this Rainbow Babies program have been able to do. And we're so happy to be able to support efforts like this across the world. Telehealth is coming, and a lot of different sub-vertical specializations from a platform perspective are coming for all of you. And we are going to be ready, and we're gonna be your partner right there alongside you. That's the plan. Now, alongside all of this, we also have made you some promises, right? We promised that we would build one single unified portfolio and that our products would work closely together. At Cisco Live, in about a month, we're going to be announcing a unified client. And that's all Aruna, our CMO, will let me say about it. So I'm zipped. But stay tuned and watch the space because in one month, we're gonna have something phenomenal for the employee experience. In the meantime, the other half of a unified portfolio is bridges instead of island and bridges out to all the other players in the ecosystem. And that means interoperability. So with that, I'd actually like to show you what we have already done in the last 12 months from an interoperability standpoint with Microsoft, with Google, with Apple, and with many more players to come. have a lot of customers ask, okay, well, what about your premise-based portfolio? Are you continuing to invest there? So let me just give you an example. The grand irony of this is when I first started, Jabber already had 36 million active users. Today, a year later, we've got 45 million active users on Jabber. So basically, in the last year, we've grown a Slack. Okay, so 9 million users, we've grown a Slack. So yes, you better believe we're gonna to continue to provide a phenomenal experience for our customers on our premise-based portfolios across the board. And you're gonna see us continue to invest there and make certain that that employee experience is phenomenal. And finally, on the cloud calling side, with the Broadsoft acquisition, we now own 57% together of the global cloud calling market. But that's just the beginning. And the thing, if you step back and you take a look across the entire portfolio, whenever I come to shows like this, it always hits me 
that everyone, every other player in this space is trying to amass the different pieces to have an entire unified communications portfolio. And the one thing is, Cisco already had it. And we've had it for quite some time. The pieces needed to be knitted together into one unified portfolio, and the pieces needed to play well with the other ecosystem parts. So that's exactly what you're going to be seeing from us, and we're going to be delivering hit after hit on that for the next one month, two months, three months, 18 months. And overlaid on top of that, you're going to see a layer of context and intelligence come in through cognitive collaboration to massively differentiate the portfolio. So there's the brass tax piece, which we are not taking our eyes off of and we are laser focused on. And then there's the differentiation and the more expansive piece of cognitive collaboration, which is just gonna set this portfolio far apart from all others. So you bring those two halves together and we're so excited to have shown you what we have for you today, tomorrow, and for many tomorrows to come. Thank you.